Hi, my name is Lee. I'm a quantum control engineer here at Q Control. And in this presentation, I'll be talking about how to reconstruct the noise power spectral density in quantum device using convex optimization. Um, the performance of current state of the art quantum device, including quantum computers and sensors, is limited by noise. Any quantum device has some inevitable coupling to its outside environment, which introduces stochastic noise processes. Quantum control techniques can compensate and correct these noises, but they have to first be characterized. A noise spectral density that provides information about a noise strength as a function of frequency is a useful characterization tool. Often the origin of a noise can be recognized through spectrum features or the power law a noise power spectrum has. Furthermore, the noise power spectrum can be used to engineer controls that are robust to the noise in the relevant frequency windows. Uh, characterizing a noise spectrum can be practically difficult um, with quantum devices because standard te uh, characterization techniques typically only work at room temperatures. Uh, when a device is brought to a cryogenic operating temperatures, the preview characterization might become inaccurate. Uh, here we present a novel approach where we characterize the noise using the quantum system itself, for example, the qubit as in suit de detectors. Uh, let's have a look at the overall process of characterizing the noise power spectra. So here the top left figure shows the dynamics of a qubit is affected by some noise uh, process, which can be characterized by uh, this power spectrum density function. Uh, we can apply different control signals directly to the qubit. For example, ideally these control signals are equivalent to applying an identity gate for a noise-free qubit. Uh, we can then measure the final state of the qubit to access the infidelity of the control operations. The relation between noise and control signals can be described by a so-called filter function in the frequency domain. In fact, each control signal here corresponding to a filter function as shown in the bottom left figure. On the top right, we show controls that are generated by modulating a Gaussian signal with sine function of different frequencies. Uh, by changing the frequency, we have a sequence of filter functions that scan the frequency range we are interested in. Uh, once you have the measurement and field functions, it becomes an inverse problem to identify the underlying noise spectra. And in this presentation, we will uh, show a novel approach to solving this inverse, uh, inverse problem using convex optimization. Uh, before diving into the details, uh, we briefly talk about the standard way of performing noise reconstruction. For example, to characterize the defacing noise, it usually consists of three steps. Uh, first, to generate a set of CPMG pulses and measure the final state of the qubit after applying each sequence. And finally, we reconstruct the noise spectra using the standard suter alvarez matrix inversion algorithm. Uh, there are several issues with the standard approach. First, the CPMG sequences uh, put a restriction on the density of measurements since the peaks of the harmonics must line up within the band of interest. And also the CPMG sequences have higher order harmonics, which can lead to higher frequency noise process incorrectly contributing to the reconstruction. So this is a process known as uh, spectral leakage and often makes the reconstruction results unreliable. Uh, the Q control approach to performing noise characterization consists of four steps. So compared to the standard method, it allows one to use arbitrary control sequences that are best suited to the reconstruction. Uh, we then calculate the, the, uh, the corresponding uh, field functions and reconstruct the, uh, the noise spectrum. A key challenge to characterizing a noise power spectrum is, is to solve the inverse problem. So here we present the Q-control solution to this problem based on convex optimization. And so first note, we are using a classical random process for describing the decoherence of quantum systems. Uh, that is the system Hamiltonian is divided into two parts. One is to describe the control that apply on system as they are often unitary operations. The second part describes the noise. Here NK is a system operator and k labels different noise channels. A beta k are the classical random variables. 
these noise processes are assumed to be stationary and independent. Uh, if the noise is weak, then there's a linear relationship between the corresponding filter functions and the noise spectra, uh, which is defined as the Fourier transformation of the autocorrelation function of beta. Here, IJ is the operational infidelity for control J, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, you can find the details of the derivation in the NJP paper. Uh, the second step is to uh, discretize the integral and turn it into matrix form. Here, assume we just uh, performing the discretization uniformly uh, across the frequency domain. We will have a, a matrix F and a vector S. So each element of K here is also a matrix describing the filter function for the noise channel K and each row corresponds to individual control. Uh, similarly, SK is a vector uh, representing uh, the noise spectrum of channel K that is to be uh, reconstructed. So here matrix F is often a rectangular matrix, uh, meaning we can't directly solve the equation by inversing F. And instead we can reformulate the problem into an optimization problem. Uh, the objective function is defined as the distance between fs and i plus a regularization term. Uh, we also introduce a constraint that the, uh, the elements of s uh, must not be non-negative since they represent the power. By minimizing the constraint objective function, the optimal solution should represent our best understanding of the spectrum. The regularization term can introduce certain prior knowledge about the noise. For example, uh, you may choose to minimize the difference uh, between adjacent elements uh, in the solution. Uh, this effectively imposes a restriction on the result since we, we would not expect it to have a higher resolution than the field function itself. Uh, we often choose this term as a convex function and the optimization problem itself is then convex and can be solved efficiently by the Q control optimizer. Lambda here is a hyperparameter and it's a, it's a positive value that represents the weight of the regular, uh, regularization in the solution. It is very important to find a proper hyperparameter for preventing the overfitting in the solution, uh, which is a common task in machine learning. Uh, we use the cross-validation method to find a suitable hyperparameter and this approach converges to an accurate reconstruction with sufficient samples. Um, as an example, we consider a simulation of probing a magnetic field by measuring defacing signals on the MV center. Uh, the control signal used here is called a sleeping uh, pulses, which is well known for being mathematically optimal in terms of spectrum concentration within a target, uh, sense, uh, target sending band and they have a tunable frequency response and therefore solve the spectrum leakage issue. Here, each pulse is designed to perform an identity uh, operation if there's no noise in the system. And we only care about the defacing process related to the uh, T2 time rather than T1, uh, meaning the gate operation and the measurement are short compared to T1. The goal is to reconstruct the noise spectrum at a low frequency range as highlighted. Uh, we will compare the result between stand approach and the Q-control approach. Uh, we first show the, uh, the field function corresponding to each of the controls. In this plot, we can see the original noise, uh, original noise spectrum, and we and a set of field function which uh, look like colored peaks. So each colored peak uh, corresponding to the field function of, uh, of an individual control pulse. Uh, we can see that each control has a single narrow peak around the center frequency uh, that is shifted for different pulses. And this peak sample the frequency range we care about. As a comparison, we also show the field function calculated with CPMG pulses. Uh, we can see that this high order harmonics outside the frequency range were interesting and this spectrum leakage can distort the uh, reconstruction result. So here we compare the reconstruction result from the Q-control and the stand approach. Uh, the top figure is the result from the Q-control approach, and it shows an accurate high-resolution result. The stand approach result is shown in red at the bottom, 
as we can see, uh, the, uh, the magnet magnitude of some peaks are incorrectly predicted. Uh, the resolution is worse, and there are fictitious peaks arising, which could be due to spectrum picture from the higher order harmonics in the CPMG field functions. Uh, it is clear that the Q-control noise reconstruction approach gives us higher resolution and also more accurate results that are robust to superior higher frequency contributions. Uh, the noise reconstruction method has also been applied experimentally in the quantum control laboratory at the University of Sydney in collaboration with Q-control. Uh, details of this demonstration can be found in the paper available on Archive. A key innovation in this demonstration was using the spin motional entanglement to probe noise on the bosonic oscillator modes of the ion. Uh, in the figure on the right, we can see two reconstruction of the spectrum. The reconstruction in black was completed with sequences suffering the same spectrum package problems as, as the standard approach mentioned above. Uh, while the reconstruction in red was completed with narrow band slapian pulses, uh, we can see the black spectrum has fictitious peaks due to the high order noise process interfering with the reconstruction process, uh, while these are suppressed by use of slapping uh, controls. So this is a, a totally different physical setting from a single qubit subject to defacing, uh, but we can still use the identical technique due to the d-dimensional field function and flexible reconstruction algorithm we developed. Uh, in summary, uh, we have shown a new approach to reconstructing the noise spectrum. As demonstrated in both simulation and experiments, we use uh, narrowband slapping pulses to optimally estimate the noise spectrum properties uh, without leakage from higher frequency noise. And we use the convex optimization approach to reconstruct the, the noise spectrum density with a high resolution. A further work will uh, look, in, look at automating the hyperparameter tuning process for our method and applying the algorithm to reconstruction problems with multiple noise channels. Um, thank you for watching this presentation from Q-Control. If you have any question, you can reach out to the team by going to qcontrol.com.